How's it going, everyone? My name is Sam Welker, and this is Cosmic Sandbox. And today, we're going to be talking about utilizing some really cool features in Houdini to create some offsets on some floorboards. Now, this is a really specific setting of or application of this kind of effect, but this is an effect that can work across so many different types of um, uh, needed effects inside of visualization and animation world building etc um and houdini is often known for like the really glamorous things like vellum uh fluid sims pyro effects things like that but uh, what a lot of people getting into houdini don't know is it's also one of the most useful tools for uh, this exact kind of thing replication with variation proceduralism you can do so much more in here than any other software i've ever used if you cinema 4d maya things like that you gotta you gotta tap into a whole lot of python if you want to get this level of control in any other program. So we're going to go through and show you how just a few simple nodes can give you a really cool setup. So anyways, let's go ahead and jump in. So this is the difference between what we're going to be creating. This is a floorboard that I've created and modeled in um, a mix of Cinema 4D and Houdini. The actual flooring itself is Houdini. The environment is Cinema 4D. And what we're going to do is take this boring texture, which is a wonderful texture, from a uh, substance source from uh, substance3d.adobe.com slash assets. Um, or you, um, excuse me, this, this texture is wonderful, but in this case, it's very boring in its application. We're going to create some nice variation using Houdini. Uh, the same thing is going on down here. You can see it's varied down here. This is actually the actual look of it versus, versus the uh, you know, boring version. And uh, this is a you know, gallery environment I've created for a project if you've seen my demo reel at samwelker.com you may have seen this before with uh, some stuff in here but uh anyways let's go ahead and take a peek at this um so there's two things to note that are going on here there's a you know a lot of nodes in here um actually it's really not a lot but there's a couple of nodes in here but there's only two that we need to focus on today we're going to be in the interior here and in the material net so the interior is where we find the geometry uh, this is how I created this effect. So let's go ahead and zoom out and look at it. So um, if I select a node and hit R, it uh, sets the flag to render. So that gives us the ability to look at it. I think T is for template. Um, nope, that is not. Uh, honestly, I don't remember. Not gonna, not gonna remember right now. But anyways, uh, we uh, take this, we um, make it a little bit smaller, we offset it, and then we merge them together and create this. Uh, if I Turn off the make gap transform node. It basically just uh, uh, makes it larger, and then there's less of a gap in between the tiles, which makes it less realistic. Then I UV unwrap them, and before there's no UVs, now there's UVs. So then I copy and copy, and I position. So let's look at that again. Wider out. So normal, copied, wide copy, small. Okay. Then I cut it out using the actual flooring and this is the environment that I wanted. All right, and if we look at the UVs, sorry for the extreme scaling, um, you can see that there are lots of um, repetition here. There's a lot of repetition. Like if you look at this, this all has the letter K down here, N, O, P, K, L, M, N, O, P, K, L, M. It is exactly what you don't want for repeating textures. It's just going to be a constant repetition. It's not going to look good. That's not what you want. But we have a nice fix for that. So the next thing I did was I created a fuse node. It's not for the actual uh, UVs and offsets. Um, this is just in preparation for beveling out here. Oh, that's not what I want. Ah, what did I do? Apologies. That is not supposed to do that. Okay, there we go. Bevel like that. Um, and then we uh, use some normal nodes, and this is where things get really cool. So in Houdini, you have for each loops. This is from the programming world. Welcome to programming. It's really not complicated. I promise it's not scary. It just says for each something, in this case piece, do this. Whatever I put inside. Yeah, that's it. It's just for each chunk. You know, each connected piece, which is the connectivity node, which it puts in for you, by the way, um, it says for each piece based on this attribute here, which is placed here, just use these effects in here. And then we're going to use a metadata node. I'm going to show you how this is created. So let's go ahead and 
visualize this. So if we go through and visualize, uh, what we can do is for each of these nodes, we can do something like create a random offset. And this is what we're going to be doing today. There are two different offsets we're using. Offset UV, which offsets the UVs. And for some reason, some of these don't offset the same way. Honestly, at this current moment, I don't know why. But um, it didn't seem to cause any issues, so I just left it. Um, and then the other thing we're going to do is uh, create a piece tint attribute as well. So two attributes, very simple. And then after that, I put in a quick shade for reviewing it, then a material, and then I put it out and put it in the scene. Let's go ahead and take a peek, though, at how this is created, and we'll jump into the material. Okay, very easy. What we're going to do is grab this normal here, which is up here. This is all of the floorboards, and I'm going to pull out a wire so I can start a new node line. And we're going to do a four, we're going to put down a four each connected piece node. Except for this is not a node, this is three nodes. This says for each connected piece, do what's inside. So it's going to put down a connectivity node. It's going to name the attribute class. And at the end, it will have it listed as class. Uh, over here, I had switched this to um, a, uh, what's called a piece attribute instead of class. Um, that or that's what I did in 19. I actually don't remember. But um, this was created in 19. And now we are reviewing it in 19.5. All right, the next thing we're going to do is... Uh, use the for each begin node and click the create meta import node. Now, this is going to give us a node that allows you to have access to the iteration attribute. This is built in and it's not um, built in as a default, but it gives you the option to do it if you want to so it doesn't slow things down more. Then what we can do is we can drag this down and we can add an attribute adjust float node. Now, this is what I'm going to use to create a um, attribute, and this is going to be called offset UV. And what we're going to do is utilize this to offset the UVs. So if we visualize this, there are 738 um, iterations here. You can see it says merge 738. So it takes all of these different individual pieces and it merges them into 738. And now we have this offset UV on all of them. If I open up the geometry spreadsheet, you can go through and see. It's set to zero right here. And if we go over here, it's set to zero all the way down. But if we set this to the detail command, which we'll do in a second, we can actually vary that. So if we look at the actual visualization, let's open this up, offset UV, you can see not showing up and then showing up. So the only thing we need to do here is type an expression in here. We're going to use a function called detail. We're going to open parentheses and then open quotation marks and we're going to type dot dot slash and then we're going to get the name of the for each metadata node for each and then that gives us the metadata node here it's begin to underscore metadata one just double click on that and close the quotation now what this dot dot slash is is this is from programming it says go up go up a directory this node right here when you type the detail command will look inside of it but if you do the dot dot slash, it will look in the parent group, which is the interior node, which is where we're at right now. This is a geometry node. The next thing we're going to do is type comma and then open um, quotation again. And we're going to type iteration and then close that. And then comma zero close parentheses. What this is saying is saying, go to this node, look for this attribute. And if you don't find it, use this as the default. And that's the detail. That is the detail function in its purest form. It's super simple. And now you can see this is identical between both of these. Now, the next thing is we're going to add a second attribute adjust node, and we're going to give it a second function. Now, what this is going to give us, by the way, is this isn't changing any UVs. This isn't adjusting anything. It's just giving us an attribute. If we look at the attributes over here, you remember how this was all zero? Well, now it's zero and it counts up. You can see that number right here getting bigger it goes all the way up to 737 all right second one what we're going to do is change this from offset uv to piece tint piece tint is the name we're using and this is just an attribute name i selected it you can name it whatever you want as long as it doesn't coincide with ruining you know overwriting other um, attributes that you need 
And if you don't know what attributes are available, if you middle mouse click and hold, you can see what attributes are in here. So just don't copy any of these and you'll be fine. Um, and you can also mouse over and click on the I key, um, just so you know. But anyways, uh, we want piece tint. And then what we're going to do is take this and add four letters to the beginning. R-A-N-D, and then open parentheses, and then at the end, close parentheses. So now we've taken this, and we've added a random variation to create this. And what it's doing is basically taking this setup, which has these different values for each object, uh, for each piece, and it's going to say, hey, you have these random numbers, or you have all these specific numbers, 0 to 737. I want you to get a value between 0 and 1 based on the random seed of those numbers. So the random seed, you could put any number in here. In this case, I'm just using the iteration, and it gives us this. Now we can output that through there and run it through, and we have everything we need. So at that point, it's all roses. Great, nice, clean, easy to work with. We have all these attributes in here, and if we put the material on, it's not going to do anything. We have to tell Houdini what to do with it. So let's go ahead and output the actual interior node here. Let's turn this off. Um, this is the interior out node. This is just an old object. This has everything else imported as well. And this is what we want to have access to. Let's go ahead into the material network and go into the flooring material net. Um, you can also, uh, so either drop down a material net or go to the mat net here. Um, I like to just put it in the mat net here. And then I'm in this node here. You will not have access to the scene because I have stuff in here that I can't legally share because I don't know the rights to share it, but uh, that's where I am at. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to pause while we are um, while we are uh, recording this uh, or while it's rendering because the rendering and recording do not get along. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a peek at this camera here and the render view. So I'm going to go ahead and pause and render it and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so here's where we're at with the material. This is just the material. Right now, there's no variation or anything. And this is what we're going to look at first. So this is the old Redshift material, not the new standard one from 3.5. Um, it looks great, in my opinion. Still works well. Um, this is what I set it up with when... Uh, this was before 3.5 came out. And I set some roughness and some IOR adjustments and coding adjustments. And everything else is pretty much, you know, standard. Um, didn't use sheen or fraction or transmission or backlighting, just these right here. Now, what we did next was I used the texture sampler with some color correction, which you'll see how that works. This just pulls in the um, material from Substance Source, which is now Adobe Substance, and then also the roughness map and the bump map. Uh, actually, this is a normal map, uh, not a bump map. And then I put that into a bump map node and then use tangent space normal and uh, scale it down. Um, and it looks really good. And then, uh, yeah, this is um, the base, uh, base color. So it's like the albedo, the diffuse. Um, whatever name it is given, it's pretty much the same thing across the board. Um, and then after all three of those are imported, I will show you what that looks like. I'm going to unpause, actually. Uh, I lied. I'm not going to render that. That'll just take some more time that we don't need to take. Um, so uh, this this is what that looks like. Um, this is what that is rendered with without variation. Then what we can do is we can go ahead and use this. This is one offset, and this is the other, or excuse me, attributes. So um, this is utilizing a very helpful node. It's called the RS User Data Scalar node. The RS Scalar User Data node allows you to put in any attribute. You can use that to drive other attributes. So in this case, I'm using that here to put in the offset UV. So I'm going to show you over here again because right now the rendering is slowing down the computer and making the um, the recording not look good. So we're going to skip that. This is the offset UVs and the uh, piece tint applied. So um, before it's applied, uh, you know, with uh, before the pink and the blue nodes are turned on, and then after is over here. And that's it. And what they look like um, with the setup is as follows. So we have the offset UV, and I'm putting that into two math nodes. Um, and each one is multiplied by point zero, or 0 0.25. And that's just to change how much it affects it. 
um, and then I use that to offset the x and the y uh, in a vector. And this creates a node based on that attribute, which you know each each attribute um, or each piece has a different number. So that will be that number times 0 0.025, um, and that will go into this, and it will basically shift the texture slightly on each one, just enough so that it uh, gets a nice uh, variance, but it still uh, it, it still looks good. So you'll still see some uh, tiles look very similar, but if you look at the actual render here, the textures generally don't uh, line up very well. Now I used 0.25, that gives us like every fourth one looking the same, um, because once it moves one whole number, then it's in the same spot. Um, but uh, in this case, uh, it seemed to work very well. And that's just for offsetting the actual uh, the texture sampler node, which is just taking that vector, which gives us a vector 3, and we can actually put that into a vector 2. And then that gives us the offset. We do the same thing on the nodes down here, just with the texture sampler. Let me drag this up so you can see. And then we also use the data scaler, or the, excuse me, user data scaler node here uh, with the piece tint attribute. And what we did with that is we plug those in, or plug that into two math range nodes. This one is for the gamma, and this one is for the hue. The gamma is going to output 0 0.8 to 1.2. That is all that gives these variations in brightness. The variance in the darkest and the brightest is basically that gamma node. And then the hue node, I'm going to be honest, I actually don't think it worked. Um, but if it had been working, it would be adjusting the hue. But I actually really like how it looked anyways. So I'm very happy with how it turned out, and I'm kind of glad it didn't do a, math, you know, a massive shift in the hue. Um, and this is what it actually looks like in the end. If you want to see um, the render of what this actually looks like in the project, go to samwelker.com, W-E-L-K-E-R, not Walker, Welker. Um, and you can see my demo reel and see what, uh, what it looks like with some balloons using vellum in the middle. It's actually very fun. But uh, yeah, that's uh, one of the first shots in my demo reel. So anyways, uh, that is how we set up this Redshift material network and the attributes in Houdini to create this really cool variation and take a very uh, basic and bland scene and just bring it to life so much more. I think that these variations here look a little bit strong in this shot, but they work really well down here. Down here, very flat, kind of boring. It works, but it's not as good. Um, but you do need to offset the textures as well. It just, it just looks so much better. And it's such a simple, quick, easy thing to do. This video itself with the explanations is like 15 minutes long. So, um, you know, probably going to hit 20 minutes, but anyways, a very simple effect to do. So anyways, guys, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If not, please let me know why in the comment section below. If it was helpful, let me know as well. And hopefully we can make some more cool videos on this topic. If you want to see anything else from these projects that you see, or if you see anything else in my demo reel that you would like me to explain, please let me know. I would be happy to show you. And also, I am a freelance 3D artist. If you need someone to do this kind of work for you, I would love to chat and see if we're a good fit. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time here at Cosmic Sandbox.